known as the benevolent queen of the beach. Carol, tell us a little bit about yourself, where you were born, your life. Yes, I was born in San Francisco in 1933 on McAllister. And I went through the Depression and World War II, so I know how the cities changed from that time. Very interesting. And I raised my children on the beach in the 60s. And the kids that came down there from Haight Street used to say I was the first hippie because I was a natural. I go in the water, body surf, teach all the young people how to body surf. I said, oh, nature is where it's at. You have to be close to nature. <laughs> That's the path to take. And I was known to be, I guess, Mother Nature, they used to call me. And I had three beautiful children. And I was the first one to throw their clothes off and they pitter patty on the beach. And that was in the 60s. Then it came in hordes, all these kids that would run away from their home. And I thought, oh my God, thank God I have a big house. I'm going to help these kids, right? So now, they didn't have, have a place question to stay. For you, Carol. Yes. Were a lot of these kids coming from the Haight Ash? Yes, yes, yes. And they were runaways. And when things got bad, their parents would say, oh, help me, help me. And the police would come, oh, Carol, we know you have blah, blah in the house. <laughs> so come on now, we're, are they okay? You know, it's a lot of young people. They were uh, 15, 14, 16 years old, runaways. They didn't like the, their lifestyle. They were having a conventional lifestyle. And they wanted to do something different. So they tried, you know, this freedom. In those days, the city was owned by, I mean, the beach was owned by the city. Now it's the NRA, government. And uh, we had a very big community. Everything was community in those days. And you don't have that now. It's so rigid now with the government police. Right. And uh, so in the old days, I always say the old days, but the old days are 30s or in the 60s, we did feel we had some control over our environment, you know, and, and how to live. And so in my day, it was against the law. You weren't supposed to breastfeed. I was the start of that. I was the start of saying, oh, I don't know about your history books. I don't know about that Indian story. <laughs> I, that doesn't sound right to me. I don't know, uh, vaccination and all of this stuff. I was started that stuff. And... Uh, what else? I was just curious if any of these kids kept in contact with you later? I made very, very close friends with the young people, yes. So some of these kids are totally grown up now. Oh, yes, babies, and they have their own businesses and stuff. And some of them yes. keep in contact with you? Well, let me tell you how I got that article. Was uh, a young boy who uh, lived on hate, and his parents, in those days, it was a lot of... Uh, in those days, it was not the word dysfunctional, right? But most people were all just fucking dysfunctional, okay? <laughs> and so this poor kid would come down all bruised up, and I go, God, Kenny, what's all this bruise? And, oh, my father just beat me up, my mother's drunk, and blah, blah, blah. And I go, well, you better come live with me. And uh, he did. He turned out to be a lovely person. And I fixed him up with his wife, and they moved back east. And there was this man that did this article, I don't know what he was doing. What, back. what was the article and what paper? Uh, this article, this Queen's Beach article. This man who wrote this, what was his name? President Custer. Scott Osler. Uh, Osler. Okay, he met Kenny back east. He says, oh, you know, i got to write one good article about somebody from San Francisco. He went, Kenny, I hadn't seen him in years. I mean, uh, oh, God, 30 years? He says, I remember this woman that helped my life. And that's, yeah. Uh, also in this article, I read that you're still taking kids in to this day. Well, it's not like the old days. Yes, yes. that's true. Uh, I'm, it says, paper says I'm getting ripped off and robbed and yes, sued. Yes, and sued. And I can't stop helping. I, I have some kind of weakness where I, I just can't stop well, it. I would call I just, it a strength. I would call well, it a strength and, a, and, mm -hmm. and an inspiration. Yes. Well, thank you. My last boyfriend said, Carol, it's just one thing. You're just a compassionate person. You're just full of compassion. And now it's so different now. Should I say this? <laughs> I mean, there's a, this drug problem. Yes. Okay. Sure. And I let people in that I don't know. This is all modern stuff, you know. I'm so not, that's I mean, a little bit of how in the '60s the way it is, was with psychedelics compared to what's going on now. It was different. It was all in fun. Yes. You know, they wanted to just what they call trip out, expand their mind. Right. They 
they were tired of all this conventional. Only the mother and father weren't that exciting. Looking and for a new the way. The suburbs, the suburbs were starting, you know. And then urban renewal came now in the 60s, and that was hell. Mm -hmm. They chopped down, and, they, and then uh, the neighborhood association got to stop, or else this, the whole place would be chopped mm -hmm. down right. in the 60s. Mm -hmm. Now, what was the other? It was very interesting. Well, the, was on the, other. The, 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 they were psychedelics. Oh, the okay. 60s, the kids. Now, the kids uh, would do this, for, like you say, mind expansion. And they were very intellectual in those days, mm -hmm. okay? very uh, learned kids. Uh, they wanted to know, and they, they'd study, uh, you know, they were a lot from Berkeley, too. They'd all get together and talk about the government, and the, this and that, and they were very educated. Right. And uh, they knew something was going to happen. You know, they knew they could feel something was coming down, you know, these restrictions, urban renewal. Uh, corporate, all this corporate stuff, no jobs, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the unions were being squished, you know, uh, it, it was hard times, it was nothing for uh, young people to do, so they were trying to find where, what was their place mm -hmm. in this society, mm -hmm. and then they, what could I do, but just say, I just wanted them to get off this, I thought it would break, damage your brain, right, <laughs> like, no, no, don't do this, is that, that's not good for your brain, I, you know, <laughs> This, you know, we can figure it out. The communes I was all for, you know. That, you know. Do, do you know anything about the communes? Uh, I never, that? but I had a lot of friends who went, they were going to Oregon and Mendocino and all over the place. I bet a lot of the kids that stayed, then it sometimes took off to the woods. And yes, the communes yes, and, yes. And came back. And I took them on a lot of nature trips and stuff. So and what's stuff. the difference between then and now, would okay. you say? Uh, well, now technology has this where, you know, these ear things and television and and uh, uh, computers and all this and things has changed. Video cameras. <laughs> <laughs> uh, very radical. People aren't into community anymore. People aren't communicating like they used to. Trying and to. young people, we were all into getting to know. We used to go in big gangs, all of us. Guys, there'd be about, I'd say about 50 of us at the beach, okay? And then we'd all be interested in what each other thinks, you know, and it's not like that anymore. I sit outside in front of my house, and people think, I, well, this, cra this crazy lady sits out in front of her house. You know, and then I say hello to everyone that walks by. Mm -hmm. You know, I try and keep up the... Because you, you are still who you are. Yes, yes. And a lot of people say, oh, Carol, you're just like the 60s still, you know, because I jump in the water. I'm always jumping in the oceans, and I throw my clothes off, boom, you know, the free, you know, spirit and all. So and I, you still live in the same house you lived yes, in the 60s. Yes, 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 that's correct. Mm -hmm. And then... What would be fun, maybe sometime come in the kitchen, they call it a hippie kitchen. I've got all this stuff all over the place. <laughs> was it there by the beach at that time? Pardon me? An amusement park? Oh, yes, it was called Playland. And did, did you know anything about that place? Did you ever come Oh, there? gosh, yeah. Oh, that was so much fun. In uh, those days, everything was built for uh, enjoyment, for families, you know, to have fun. It doesn't seem that there's not nothing, no place to have any fun anymore. I mean, there was big ballrooms and dancing and, you know. And fly shackers, we had fly shackers. What's a fly That shacker? was a, the long, uh, a swimming pool at ah. the end of uh, where, where the um, zoo is now. Right. And that was something else. <laughs> I mean, it was uh, the longest uh, pool, outdoor pool in the, um, in the country. Yes. Fly shackers had donated that. And it's, I don't know what happened, it's not there anymore. Right. But, uh, and then we had, oh, so many things. You had the Fox Theater. And, uh, people don't even talk about the Fox Theater. That was on Market Street. Of course, this is before the 60s now. That's fine. Is That's that okay? Fine. But I think it, this is going to go in the library. You should know this. Sure. Uh, this theater was, it was so beautiful. It was about a block. It was a whole block, a theater, a, a, a theater, a movie house. And we used to play hide and go seek in there and stay in there all day and have fun. And then George Wright was an organ player, this huge organ. I mean, it was as big as this room. And with this, these pipes, I don't know how many feet high. So it was so much fun. Um, did you have, did the kids ever talk about the straight theater that was on Hate Street? Okay, which theater was it? That was on Cole and Hate. There's a Goodwill store there now on Hate Street. What was it called? I forgot. The Straight Theater. Oh yeah, they used to talk about that. The Bible was or the Mind True. Oh or right. The Diggers. Yeah. How did you get the food to take care of these kids? Was there any help in the community? Oh, I had a good husband. <laughs> he understood. <laughs> Oh, go ahead. <laughs> How many kids at one time would be? What was the most? You had? Oh gosh, I had my three. Right. And uh, there'd be maybe oh three, three more. Two. Or okay. Three more. Yes. 
Now, how about it? I mean, do you have any Okay, kids I'm beginning kids? to uh, take care of older. Since I'm 72, I'm, right. I'm so taking care of these people, people in their wonderful. 50s uh, and 40s, and they're all on, uh, I didn't know, I hate Oh, so you're taking people in in their 30s and 40s yes, now. So and you're I'm going to stop it. Okay. I'm going to stop it. Yeah. I, no, I'm still doing this. Okay. okay. See, I think maybe some people have had the experience you have and have yes. been hurt by it. Yes. And then they don't continue it. Right. No, I'm still continuing. I don't know when I'm going to stop. But no. the young kids, it's the young yeah. kids that have no one to turn to. Uh-huh. Right. And right. are looking for a better way than what they have at home. Mm -hmm. The young people I talk to now are starting, they're, they're nothing... I guess you'd say yuppies, <laughs> but these these kids are different than yuppies. They're highly educated kids, and they sure know about business. And they starting different businesses, surf shops, uh, plant shops, and I'm kind of in contact with them. They're very nice kids. See, in the '60s, what we were looking for was a utopian society. Yes. I don't think they're yes. doing that anymore. No, right, right. So they're not doing that anymore. They're trying to. Keep natural and be business at the same time. Exactly. Yeah, they're very, very smart, these kids. It's very a monetary, educated. material yes. direction rather yes. than yeah. a heart mm -hmm. and spirit and a spirit of love yes. and uh, direction and mm -hmm. community type yeah. direction. Mm -hmm. Did you ever um, go dig the ground and plant your own vegetables? And I was the first one to do this. I was the first one to always have vegetables, the first one to have compost, and they thought I was all the... Crazy what about recycling? Compost. Recycling. Yeah, I was the first one to do that. Yeah, and the neighbors would complain and bring out the health department. The health department. Oh my God, everything's okay. Was this in the fifties or the sixties? This is the sixties. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. I was recycling. That. And breastfeeding started. was all taboo. You weren't supposed to breastfeed. I did that. I started that again. I started the natural. I was the first natural food. I'd squeeze a watermelon. <laughs> I'd squeeze papaya juice for the kids. I was a health. The first health food freak. <laughs> In those days, it was just one health food store in the 60s. Tom's in San Francisco? Store. Yes, it was a, a little closet on uh, Clement, the first Clement, health store. I remember it. Tom's yes. Health Food. Yes. Yeah, it was a good friend of mine. Uh -huh. And that was all, this, or, well, it didn't have to be organic in those days. It, you know, DDT, no, let's not talk about that. But anyway, <laughs> I'm gone. Thank God DDT is, you know, gone. Things have gotten better. You know, um, so, no matter... You're sitting outside your house, and people don't have a clue who you are. Mm -hmm. And I was way. Hello. They think you're the bag lady. They have no clue. Oh right, they, 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 yeah, they, they have no clue what you're doing. I go on the beach, and people say, uh, "How do you live here?" I go, "Live where?" Oh, well, don't you live on the beach? I go, "No, no, I'm here. I body surf. I, I go in the ocean." They can't understand it because in the old days, like I told you, they go there to walk their dogs now, not to participate in the nature and the sun and communicating. with so on one level, people that don't have a clue what you do, what mm -hmm. you believe, and how, what a good heart you have. Yes. On the other level, you have got the police department calling you with a child that needs help, yes. a school. Mm -hmm. So you had a relationship, and, and the, they would call you from schools? And oh, yes. Can you tell us something about that? And how, well, these uh, were uh, the parents that would call, and they'd call the police, and the police would come over. They say, wow. oh, you've got this child here now, come on. <laughs> oh, they would come to pick they up would the call. children. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. see. And I'd always say, yes, I have blah, 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 blah. Right. You know, they say, oh, they're safe, they're okay. <laughs> I heard a story where um, there was a Catholic school and they had trouble and that we got to call Carol's. Oh, that. right, and right, yeah. <laughs> Tell us about that. What well, happened? Oh, uh, the nuns would, uh, that was Notre Dame de Victoire. I went to that school on Bush Street. Mm -hmm. And they, they knew me. Well, they go, oh, that's our little friend, Carol. <laughs> She's a, the Saint Carol. She helps all the kids out. <laughs> be great someday if all these kids are grown up, you can get them all together. Yes. And see yes. what you did. Well, one that's them. funny, one phone the other day, Rudy, I, I couldn't believe that in 35 years. Carol, are you okay? And I thought, who's this? He <laughs> goes, I'll never forget you. I'll never forget. Because of you, I straighten out my life. So that's such a good feeling. Beautiful. There's more of us like that mm -hmm. in the community. The children would not be sleeping in the streets. Yes, exactly. or yes. Right there was no, uh, gosh, there's so many homeless people now. Yes. Um, you said that you had some experience in the Haight-Ashbury or, or surrounding areas from the 30s and the 40s. Oh, in the 30s. Uh, oh, boy. What, how can I say it? I was on McAllister Street, and in my day, there was no word ghetto, but the whole city was a ghetto, <laughs> and we were all poverty-stricken after the Depression, you see, and everyone was a community, and uh, 
I was lucky to be born on McAllister Street, and it was a uh, black neighborhood. Was this in the Haight-Ashbury, McAllister and the Haight? No, this is that way, more uh, to Steiner. Okay. Yeah. And uh, it was all all Victorian homes, now it's a project. They look like prisons now. They were right. all chopped down. And uh, I had kind of a mean mother, so I would <laughs> go around the corner to black people took care of me. Wait, I read in this article yes. that you yes. would take, you were raised by a black yes, family they raised me. in yeah. the neighborhood. Yes, they were yeah. very wonderful. Yeah. wonderful. Yeah. And they fed me, and uh, then they come around the corner. It was like a segregation uh, in those days. You never went past certain lines. North Beach was Italian, and uh, Chinatown was Chinese. Right. Uh, Stanley was Irish, and you never went, you never went out, but I... But snuck, you snuck. I snuck around. I, <laughs> they looked like they were having more fun, the black people, than we were. So I went around there and they go, Carol, come on. We've got to make some good soup for you. <laughs> what so, about your father? Uh, I never had a father. Okay. No. Okay. I had a grandmother and a mother. Okay. All right. So anything else you want to tell us about the 60s? Oh, let's see. Oh, what can I say? The 60s. Oh, uh, well, it was so colorful and so much fun. <laughs> and it's not, now technology, you know. Uh, running in this body and all this. Yes. Uh, they're into their body and their looks yes. and these things in your ears and the tell and now the computer. So it's kind of not so much fun anymore like it right. used to be. It can be a positive thing and a negative thing. Yes, that's right. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Do you also, since you lived at the beach, do you remember the Avalon Ballroom that was at well, everyone Playland? Talked about it. The, the light show, my girlfriend, my little girlfriend. She was doing the light, the, the, what do you call the strobe things? Oh, okay. she was a great thing. See, Carol, come on. I go, oh, no, I'm too tired. I, I don't like going out at night. I'm always tired. She dragged me out. I'll never forget as long as I live. The you never were, went to one of the shows? Then. No, I'm too, I was a mother, you see. I'm, yeah. not one of, I'm not a hanger outer. Right. And so, <laughs> but they go, Carol, you've got to come. And I saw the lights. It was beautiful. You could probably hear the music from where you were living, though. Yes, yes. And then it was a family dead. dog. Right, the family the, dog. Yes, that was my gang, the family dog. Right, exactly. Yes. Check Right across the street. Yes. yes. Right. Oh, they were right across the street. They was a, from the street, uh, from Kelly's, where I raised my children, where all the kids used to come, right across the street. What is Kelly's Cove? I Kelly's Cove, Cove is uh, below the Cliff House. Okay. Yes, where the Seals Rock is. That's right where the, the Sutro Tower, was. the Sutro um, pools were. No, no. Oh, right, Sutros, yes. Right. But I'm on the other side. Okay. Yes. And that's where it was all happening. That's what we had to do. Okay. If uh, you have to think about, these are many years of you involved with this. It's, uh, it's like a little bit of Mother Teresa. It's a little bit of, uh, um, you know, Johnny Appleseed. I don't know. It's a little bit. <laughs> if, if you had to be remembered, Yes. And if what you did could inspire someone mm -hmm. when this is watched, mm -hmm. can you tell us a little well, how you would feel at peace, mm -hmm. how you would feel good? Okay. What I can tell the young people or anyone who watches this is just stay close to nature as much as you can, close to the earth and nature. That's all I can say. And don't forget this. I want to thank you very much. Yes, it's a pleasure to have you. Yes. Thank, thank you, Carol. You're very welcome.